Welcome back into the Talmud, into our course BI 100 on the Gospel of John. And we're here looking at specifically verses 6 through 8, John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. And we've been on verse 7 for quite some time. And that's where we're going to conclude today in John chapter 1, verse 7. So let's go back and read it in its proper context. And we're going to be looking at the fact that Jesus is the light of the world as proclaimed by the special witness of John the Baptist. And we're going to read verses 6, 7, and 8, John chapter 1. Let's read that where we're going to be focusing in on specifically his mission. What was the mission of John the Baptist? Let's read the text. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify by the light so that all might believe through him. And he was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. And if you recall, we set, we set out to develop a three-point outline, not just because we think we're cute in developing a three-point outline, but because we can draw the outline right out of the text itself. We set that in verse 6, he was a man, John the Baptist, sent from God. And we set in verse 7 that, that he was a man with a mission, and in verse 8, a man who was great, but he was not the light. Now, I want to really focus in on today that he was a man with a mission. I think that these issues of mission work or missionaries has clearly been blurred, okay, to say the least. And so I want to draw your attention to this verse here. In verse 7, he came as a witness, John the Baptist, to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. Perhaps in my, my personal frustration, if I can express it by way of this course and this teaching, in that I've spent literally the last 36 years traveling on the world okay, as a pastor for my local church when I was pastoring the church in Los Angeles, California. Um, and now that I have stepped down there to come to South America and be full-time missionary, but I've spent 36 years traveling around the world literally doing mission work. And my frustration has been is that the word mission or missionary has become a very cheap term. It's become a term that has no meaning. Today, everybody is a missionary. You have people who go build orphanages, they call themselves missionaries. You got medical teams that go that, that are medical doctors and they go provide medical services and, and dental work and eye operations and they call themselves missionaries. You got people go build uh, training centers and they build orphanages and they build pastor's housing um, and they do all kinds of projects and they call themselves missionaries. And, and it's quite disturbing if you, if you would be honest about the subject in that they're, they're involved and they're engaged in Christian work. What they, and we should be engaged in all these kinds of activities. But to be a mission is to draw people to the light of Jesus Christ specifically. Now, I have spent a considerable amount of time, as I mentioned already, 36 years in the mission field. And what I have seen okay, is that the overwhelming majority of, people, um, majority of people do not preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, do not teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and do not draw people to the cross of Jesus Christ. So it's in that context that I want to talk to you about in John chapter 1, verse 7. And it says, he came as a witness. John the Baptist, he came as a witness to be a witness, right, to testify to the light, that's the person of Jesus Christ, so that all may believe through him. Now, when we look at the life of John the Baptist, okay, the mission of John the Baptist was to be a witness of the light. John is not an attorney, but a witness. A lawyer argues a case. I think we could agree with that, okay? He tries to prove his point. He tries to influence people of a jury through into a favorable decision for his climate. That's what his job is supposed to be. The witness is called to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And, and we come to the understanding today that how pathetic, if I can use that word, how absolutely pathetic that men have to be told that light and life is in the midst of them. It is an absolutely pathetic situation we find ourselves today, and it's been like that for quite some time. If there is anything that is obvious in a very dark place, it is a shining light. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be very clear. We live in a very dark, dark, dark world. 
evil is growing and is growing exponentially. Okay? Secularism, humanism is growing exponentially. Okay? And, and the whole and the entire evolutionary mindset, philosophical mindset is growing exponentially. So it's getting darker and darker and darker. And I find it absolutely pathetic that you have to tell people about the light in life because it's in the pure darkness that light should shine the brightest. Look, go back to John chapter 1, verse 7. This is what John the Baptist, he, John the Baptist, came as a witness to testify of the light. He says about the light, which is Jesus Christ, so that all might believe and, 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 come and might believe through him. Now, I think... That light and darkness is obvious with those who have sight. If you're not blind, okay, and you're in the midst of darkness and somebody turns on the light, I think that's pretty obvious. Why? Because the blind cannot see. They walk in darkness. Men without Christ are blinded by two things. They're blinded by their sin and they're blinded by Satan. Okay? Let me ask you to turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I want you to see this in verse 3 and 4. Verse 3 and 4, look at what he says. And even if our gospel is veiled, covered, it is veiled to those who are perishing, and in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Look. People are in such darkness that they need someone to tell them light, life, and truth is. That's, that's how deep in the darkness that they're in. That somebody has to go along and tell them what is light, what is life, and what is truth. And that's the exact same situation. If you and I would be honest, that we are surrounded with, and I don't care what country you live in, because we broadcast, to all, we broadcast to over 54 countries around the world. And we do a lot of work in the continent of Africa, a lot of work all over the continent of the Americas, okay? Central, South, and North America. We do a lot of work in Asia, and we do it across, across the globe into Eastern Asia, as well as into Europe. And here's what you have to be, you have to recognize, at least acknowledge this, okay? and that we're living in a very, very dark, dark place that you have to tell people what light is. They've been in darkness for so long, they don't even know what the light is. They, they've, been, they've, been de they, they've been living in a, a life of death, and they have to be told what life is. And they don't have no clue what truth is. Look, God would allow, let me tell you something, God would not allow his son to come into this world, come to be completely unrecognized right, and unheralded. He's not going to love that. He wanted us to know him. And John was a witness to point us to the truth of who Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is. Right? And in a courtroom, if you go to a courtroom, a verdict is established by multiple witnesses. Is that not true? Is that not true? Look, God provided multiple witnesses for us to conclude that Jesus is the Son of God. And yet, you and I have friends and family and, and, and they get into the religious talk and they, and they talk and they speak and they talk their nonsense all the time. And they'll say the craziest things okay, that sounds logical to their mind, but it doesn't line up with truth. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. I have no idea what that nonsensical term, that phrase means. Because you see, and what they're trying to tell you is that they're not religious and they don't belong to a certain denomination. And this, you know, that, you know let me tell you something, religion in, in of itself will kill you. It will send you straight to the pit, into 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 the pit of hell. You know, it's just like we're facing right now this worldwide pandemic, right? And the, so much confusion. But what the government officials are telling us, and what the doctors are telling us, and what the scientists are telling, they can't agree. They they keep changing their protocols. They keep changing the information. And, you know, on a daily basis, sometimes, okay, on an hour basis. I, I give you an example. They say, well, they they want you to use gloves. They don't want you to use gloves. Right? And you and got this game going on, and, they, and 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 one of the main reasons why they tell you is that they don't want to use gloves, they don't want you to use gloves, is because it's it's a false security, because you yeah 
The gloves were designed to be used for one time, but you're out all day and you're using these gloves, okay? And then you're ultimately you're touching your face. And they say that on the average, you touch your face at least 23 times a day. At least 23, because it's it's instinctive, it's involuntary, okay? All of us do this and we do that and we do this. You know, that's instinctive, okay? That's what we do and that's what I do. I know that, okay? And so they tell you, you're, you're contaminating yourself, okay? And so you have this false security. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what the problem with religion is. Religion gives you the false security that you're okay with God. And you're not. And you're absolutely not. Listen, God provided multiple witnesses, multiple witnesses for us to conclude that Jesus is the Son of God. And people go like this, yep, I believe that. But it's all it is is head knowledge. But their lives don't reflect that. Listen, so I want to talk to you about the witnesses that the Bible provides for us to look at. Okay? The first one is the witness of God the Father. Now, and I, want to, I, and I say this unapologetically because people tell me, well, yeah, I believe in God. It's this Jesus thing I'm not too sure about. I don't know if I should accept him as my Lord and Savior. And I don't know if I really have to do that because, you know, I've got the Virgin Mary and I got this and I got that and I got this and I got this prayer and I got this, I got these candles and I can light them up. And it's just, it, you know, and it's, and it's quite logical to their mind. And yet when you ask them, where is that in the Bible? They cannot find it. Why? Because they have the false security of religion. That's exactly what they got. And they're quite comfortable with it. Now, we have the witness of God the Father. Now, remember, these are the very people who tell me, they're the very ones who tell me, I believe in God. But they don't. But they tell you that. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 5. And in John chapter 5, I want you to see this in verse 37. John chapter 5, verse 37. Let's look at it. He says, And the Father who sent me, he has testified of me. God the Father is the first witness. He has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form, but he has testified. Well, how do we know he testified? Because no one else sent God the Son, but God the Father. In John chapter 8, and in John chapter 8, look what he says in verse 18. I am he who testifies about myself. Now, this is Jesus Christ making it. He's, he's, this, is his own test, this is his own testimony. Now look at the second half of this verse. He says in John 8, 18, he says, I am he who testifies about myself, and the Father who sent me testifies about me. So immediately, the very first witness, remember what John 1, 7 said, is said that he, John the Baptist, came as a witness to testify about the light. This is the person of Jesus Christ, so that all, may, so all might believe through him, right? And the very first witness that we have, the very first witness, is God the Father. Now we have the second witness, and that's the witness of the work of Christ. What did Christ come to do? Did he come to just sit in a chair, in his easy chair, sit in the living room sofa, and grab the remote, and all day just play with this remote? No, he didn't come to do that. Look at the work of Jesus Christ. Now, please, go back with me to John chapter 5. And in John chapter 5, look at what he says in verse 36. John chapter 5, verse 36. But the testimony, let's read this verse carefully. But the testimony which I have is greater than the testimony of John. Look at this. Jesus Christ says that my testimony is greater than the testimony of John the Apostle, John the Baptist, for the works which the Father has given me to accomplish... The very works I do testify about me that the Father has sent me. Now, who in his right mind, who in his right mind, just think about it, who in his right mind would go to the cross and die for people he didn't know? None. I mean, let's be honest. What his works were testifies who sent him. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 10. And in John chapter 10, I want you to see what it says in verse 25. John chapter 10, verse 25. And this is Jesus speaking. And Jesus answered then, and this is what he said, quote unquote. He says, I told you, you do not believe me. He says, the works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. No other deity, no other God in the history of humanity on planet Earth 
ever sent his son to die for the sins of others. That's, that's, that's clear. That's very clear. Even the atheists and the, and the pagans and the agnostics will acknowledge that. See, when Jesus spoke of the words of, uh, when he spoke of the works of Jesus, okay? I'm sorry, when John spoke. When John, the apostle, and John the Baptist, both of them did this, okay, spoke of the works of Jesus, he was not only speaking about miracles, okay? That's not what he was only speaking about, right? But of the entire life of Christ, okay? And the life that he lived every single day. Like, who do you know can live on earth without sin? Certainly not me. Not me. I'm, let me tell you something. I am, I am nowhere near perfect. I am as flawed, flawed, flawed as any other human being. If it wasn't for the grace of God to forgive me. Look, no one, absolutely nobody can have lived a life. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody can live a life of love like Jesus. No one can live a life of pity like Jesus. No one can live a life of compassion like Jesus. And no one can live a life of forgiveness like Jesus unless what? Unless God was in him and he was in God. He was the only one who was qualified to do this. Now, I want to also draw your attention to the issue of miracles, okay? Because, you know, we have all these false prophets and false healing evangelists and, and false apostles. We have all these jokers and clowns that are on television and radio and all over the internet and, and they're doing miracles and this and that and this and that and that and that. You know, th th this has already been, so many of this, so many of these are, are self-serving cockroaches. They're charlatans. They're hoodwinking you. They're playing games and you're so absolutely gullible. You know why? Because you're completely ignorant of what the Word of God says. Look, Working miracles, let me tell you something, does not, does, does, you know, the ability, your ability to work miracles does not prove that you belong to Christ. We know that. And the Bible clearly teaches that. Mm -hmm. Working miracles does not prove that we belong to Christ. But living Christ-like, living a Christ-like life, okay, each day indicates in most cases, okay, that we do belong to him. Now, let's keep with the theme here. His mission. What was the mission? To, the theme here is, is is what was John the Baptist's mission? He came as a witness. So we're talking about who are the witnesses. Here's the third witness. Okay, it was the witness of Jesus Christ Himself. Now, let me draw your attention back, please. Go back to John chapter eight, and in John chapter eight, you know what am I doing here? What am I? What I'm doing is I'm forcing you to read the Bible. Read the Word of God. You know, it, you know, it's really amazing to me how many people tell me, you know, well, I don't believe in the Word of God. And I ask them, okay, well, have you read it? And they go, no. At that point, this conversation has ended because you're talking to an idiot, okay? You're talking about somebody who, who proclaims to not to believe in something that they haven't even read, they don't even understand. It's, this is just absolutely so common. And, and they want to sound very sophisticated and very intelligent, okay? You know, but they're not. They're not. Listen, look, look at this. John chapter 8, verse 14. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 8, verse 14. Look at what he says. He says, Jesus answered him and said to them. And, and uh, you know, he, Jesus, like the Apostle Paul, has such an economy of words. He could say a lot in so little and pierce your soul. Jesus said, even if I testify about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from, and I know where I'm going. He says, but you do not know where I come from or where I'm going. Isn't that so typical of everybody who pretends to know something about God? Something about Jesus? Look what he says in that same chapter, in chapter 8. You know? Now remember, we read this earlier. Let's go back. Okay? Let's go back and look at what he says. You know, you have to teach and repeat. You teach and repeat. And what he says in John chapter 8, verse 18, he says, I am he who testifies about myself. And the Father who sent me testifies about me. Now, we're talking about John the Baptist. Okay? He came, John the Baptist, John chapter 1, verse 7, he came as a witness, okay, to do what? To testify about the life, about the light. And who is the light? Jesus Christ. 
For what reason? For what conceivable purpose? Is because he said this. He said, so that all might believe through him. Now, the life of Jesus was his best witness. His life backed up his message. You know, how you live really talks about what you really believe. I don't care. You can run at the mouth all day long and say, you can, you can claim this and claim that, but if your life is not a reflection of that, you know, you know, it, it, you know you're lying. Let's just get really direct about this issue. Okay? Your life and the testimony are very important in your service of Christ. See, this is the reason why we get accused of being hypocrites. Because you don't live what you say you, you believe. Look, he was the fourth witness. It was the witness of the Old Testament Scriptures. The witness of the Old Testament Scriptures. Look, in John chapter 5, verse 39, please turn your Bibles to John chapter 5, verse 39. And Jesus makes this incredible statement. Right? And he says, you search the scriptures, John 5, 39. He says, you search the scriptures. Why? Because you think that in them you have eternal life. But it is these that testify about me. You know, you got a lot of religious people. And, and their faith, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me, please. Don't misunderstand me. And they read the Bible every day. I mean, they're religious. They turn that Bible and they're reading and they're reading and they're reading and they're every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, and yet they have never ever had an encounter with the person of Jesus Christ. And yet they read about him, they search for him, and they never find him. Because they think they think that their salvation is in reading the book. Mm -hmm and not acting upon the truth of that book. They just think that just by virtue of reading it, they're okay. Jesus said, you search the scriptures because you think that I'm in them, okay, and you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me. In that same chapter, John chapter 5, look at what he said. Just go down a few more verses and go down and look at verse 46 and 47. Look at what he says in 46 and 47. Look what he says. For if you believed Moses... That's a big if. You would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? It's not going to happen. Here's the fifth witness. The witness of people changed. Changed. Their lives were changed by the Lord. Okay? Now you're in chapter 5 of John. Go back one chapter, chapter 4. Chapter 4. Look at this. And look what he says in verse 39. Now, this is a, this is a well-known passage of Scripture, okay? Jesus has this conversation with the Samaritans, okay? Mm -hmm. And look what he says. John chapter 4, verse 39. From what city many of the Samaritans believed in him? Because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all things that I have done. Now, what happened here? Well, well, well we know that there's a Samaritan woman. Uh, she's at the well. Jesus draws water out and offers her the water that she will never thirst again. Right? And Jesus told her her life, right? And her life was dramatically changed. It was just dramatically changed. It's just absolutely incredible, right? And, and so she, down comes, she comes out as a witness to the whole city of Samaria, okay? And what we know historically is that hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people, they come out of the city and their lives get radically changed in the person of Jesus Christ. So the witness of people changed by the Lord. You know, when I got saved, you see, you know, I was a classic idiot. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, stupid. I was raised culturally in the streets and I was raised, you know, here and there, you know. I went to school. I did all those things I was supposed to do. I went to work. I did everything that anybody else did. Okay, but you know my problem was that was that I was always fighting. I was always I was in a fist fight somewhere. Okay, and there were times I picked up a baseball bat and I racked somebody over the head as they cracked mine. Okay, I was always fighting. You know what? I, when I got saved, people looked at me. You? You? Yeah, me. I mean, I didn't even believe it. But the point was that my life was changed radically. 
Now, people didn't believe that at first and didn't accept it. And to this day, there are some people who still go, they're still iffy about that on me. Well, let me tell you something. Man. If your life is a testimony that you were changed. Let me show you. John chapter 9. Now, stay in the book of John with me. And in John chapter 9, look at what he says in verse 25. Verse 25, John chapter 9. He then answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. This blind man said, I have no clue of who you're talking about or trying to impugn the character of Jesus. All I know is that he changed my life because I could not see and now I see. See, that's a testimony of a changed life. In that same book in John chapter 12, Look what he says in John chapter 12, look at verse 17. John chapter 12, verse 17. Look what he says. So the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify about him. Now, what do we have here? Look, Lazarus is dead. Dead. He's dead, dead. Okay? Um, and it, 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 in fact, his sisters told Jesus, you know, by this point in time, it's been four days. He's decomposing and he stinks to the high heavens. And Jesus said, move the stone. Remove the stone from the tomb. And, you know, they had to think about it. what? And he said, remove the stone. Now, here's a dead man decomposing. He's lying on a slab of concrete, okay? And Jesus says, Lazarus come forth. He didn't plead with him. He said it once. Bam. Instantaneously, life returns to the body. It recomposes from that composition, okay? And boom. And he walks out. Lazarus' life was changed. He went from dead to life, from death to life, okay? But can you imagine all the people that were around there witnessing this? Their lives were radically changed. Then we have the sixth witness. is the witness of his disciples. Remember, John chapter 1 verse 7 says that he, talking about John the Baptist, came as a witness. This was his mission on earth. To testify about the light, Jesus Christ, so that all might believe through him. That's exactly what every single one of us were called to do. Look, John chapter 15. Turn your Bibles to John 15 and look at what he says in verse 27. Verse 27, look at this. He says, and you will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. You will testify about me also because you have been with me from the beginning. That's exactly what every single one of us are called to do. But it's not what we do. We rather we rather just sit there in the living room with the remote. Okay, that's because that's the life of most people. Right? And they play with their they, they, they play with their uh, with the remotes, okay, and they just watch the same nonsense all day long. Mm -hmm. And they're quite comfortable doing that. As if though the as if the TV set needs your witness. Look. Go back. Our foundational text, our theme here is, is that what was the mission of John the Baptist? Okay? And he said it again in John chapter 1, verse 7. He says, He, John the Baptist, okay, came as a witness to testify about the light, okay, so that all might believe through him. Now we have the seventh witness, and that's the witness of the Holy Spirit. The witness of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And I want you to see this with me. He's the witness of the Holy Spirit. Look what he says in John 15, verse 26. When the Helper comes, that's the Comforter, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, that's another title for the Holy Spirit, whom I will send you from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. He will testify about me. Look at John chapter 1 as we close this particular section out. He says, in John chapter 1, verse 8, he says, he was the light, but he came to testify 
about the light. Let me ask you a question. What are you testifying about with your life? 